Be still and know that I am God. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mga pangako ng Panginoon na pwede natin panghawakan at ito'y mananatili magpakailanman sapagat langit at lupa ay maparam. Subalit ang salita ng Diyos ay mananatili magpakailanman. Purihin ang Panginoon, isang pinagpalang araw sa ating lahat, mga kapatid, lalo na sa ating mga kapatid dyan sa ibang bansa. Pagpalain kayong lahat ng Panginoon, ganun din sa ating mga taga-subaybay mula Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Purihin ang Panginoon, welcome po sa ating discipleship training. At ang Diyos po magpala para sa ating lahat. Pakaingatan tayong lahat ng Panginoon, wherever you are right now, may the Spirit of the Lord Uh, empower you and establish you and may the goodness of God that uh, the abundance of God will be poured out over your life in the name of Jesus. Before we continue, I would like to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy and grace because you have given us once again this powerful and wonderful moment and privilege to study your word. We pray for your divine guidance, divine knowledge, understanding, and wisdom so that we will be able to respond and yield to your dealings with us tonight. We thank you and we bless you. We decree healing to those who are sick. We decree provision to those who are in need. And we decree peace, joy, power, and strength for those who are weak. In the name of Jesus, receive your portion tonight. Somebody is praying, you know, somebody is praying for something, you know. Uh, you, are, you are now in the midst of that uh, difficulty, you know, na kinalalagyan, uh, kina, kinalalagyan mo sa iyong buhay. The Lord is simply telling you that He is making a way for you. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. May gagawin ang Diyos sa buhay mo. Just believe and just receive your portion tonight. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We bless you and we give you praise. At sa mga, sumu sa mga sandaling ito, Panginoon, sa pasimula hanggang sa pagwawakas ng gawain ito, we pray for your divine intervention, divine interception against all the works of the enemy. Give us hunger and thirst in our spirit with your word and with your presence. We thank you once again. God, Holy Spirit, from the beginning till the end of this study, Speak to us in a very powerful way. And this is our declaration and this is what we decree in the Spirit. In the almighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen and Amen. Purihin ang Diyos. Palapan natin ang Panginoon. Glory to God. Welcome once again. Magandang gabi at pinagpalang gabi sa ating lahat. At sa mga kabubukas pa lamang ng kanilang Facebook, live rin po tayo ngayon sa YouTube. At tayo po'y pagpalain ng Panginoon sa gabing ito. At uh, please do us a favor to share this message to your friends, to your churchmates, sa sino pa ba, mga pastor o mga leaders, so that they will also be, they will be able to hear the now word of God. It is very important to receive the now word, now word of God because the now word of God is the word for the season. And if we receive the now word of God, we, 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 we can move with God in the season. And if we are moving with God in the season, then we will know what to do and we shall overcome all challenges that is uh, before us. So bago tayo magpatuloy, so we are in the continuation of our study entitled Biblical Principles that Empower and Establish Our Faith to Secure Our Victory. At nandito pa rin po tayo sa the roles and characteristics of a spiritual Father, so I've explained to you last Thursday the importance of the role of the pastor or your spiritual father in the lives of his sons. So we've discussed uh, sa previous study natin that we have to sense the urgency of uh, entering into the ideal relationship that should operate inside the church. And that is the father and son relationship. Why father and son relationship? Why is it that a member should become a son, spiritual son to a spiritual father? Because only sons and daughters are entitled to receive inheritance. Inheritance are not given to, a, uh, to an orphan. That is why this uh, pattern is biblical because it had been shown by our Lord Jesus Christ how 
he patterned the father and son relationship at ang pinaka main purpose sa father and son relationship is oneness in the spirit. John 10.30, it says that I and my father are one. Same thing in the church. The pastor, workers, leaders, and members should also be one in spirit. And if oneness in spirit, oneness in purpose, one in purpose, one in spirit, one mind, then it will be easy for us to advance the kingdom of God. So that was the, the, the main goal of our message of discipleship training last Thursday. So today, let us just continue to discover the role and characteristics of a spiritual father. Para ho sa ating pag-connect, sa ating pastor o sa ating spiritual father, there should also clarity kung bakit tayo kailangan mag-connect. So just a sort of review, no? the role of the pastor and spiritual father in the lives of his sons, number one, is to clear the pathway in the spirit. Okay, to clear the pathway in the spirit, it is simply allowing your spiritual father, your pastor, to open your eyes to see what God is currently doing. So, isa yan sa role or main role ng, uh, ng ating spiritual father. Number two, is to create change in the lives of God's people. Mahalaga ho na maintindihan natin bakit kailangan mong magpasakop, bakit kailangan mong maging spiritual son sa kanya because he has the authority, the, the, he has the grace ano, to change or create change in the lives of God's people. So mahalaga ho yan. You cannot change your life on your own. You need guidance. You need uh, instructions. You need uh, uh, leading ano, kung paano magbago, paano makapag-create ng pagbabago because whether we like it or not, mayroon ho tayong mga kanya-kanyang weaknesses. At pag sinasabing weaknesses, matagal mo ng panahon na binabattle yan. Hindi mo matalo-talo. You can be successful in other aspects of your life or areas of your life, but pagdating doon sa weaknesses mo o sa weakness mo, pag yun ang tumama sa iyo, talagang doon ka bumabagsak. At marami ho, alam ko marami sa inyo nakikinig sa akin, ay merong ganyang area sa buhay mo. And the only way for you to be delivered, the only way for you to overcome that is through the leading of your spiritual father. Kaya nga mahalaga na napaka na kailangan mo talagang mag to become a spiritual son, to behave like a son. And explain ko nung nakaraan, you don't need to, uh, kumbaga, eh, masyad, ang iba kasi masyadong nagiging literal Okay, they call their pastor tatay o eh, ako naman tawag nyo dyan. Pero ang, 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 ang pinaka-accurate na implementation or execution ng father and son relationship is in the spirit. It is a spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection, interlocking of spirit and hearts, at doon mo makikita na yung sonship, yung father and son relationship in the spirit is already in operation while you are submitting, obeying, your pastor as your spiritual father. So he can create change in the lives of God's people. Number three, uh, to form Christ in the lives of his people. Sabi ni Pablo sa Galatians 4.19, My dear children, for whom I am again in pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. To form Christ in you, you need to receive sharp, strong, and offending messages. To refine rebuke and realign yourself to the Word of God. Because as long as we are here on earth, para kang nagpipintura ng isang room na imposibleng hindi ka mapataka ng pintura sa buong maghapon. So, anong ibig sabihin? Habang tayo nandito sa lupa, hindi tayo exempted sa temptations, hindi tayo exempted sa mga traps ng kaaway. At napakahalaga na mayroong kang kinikilalang spiritual father, mayroong kang kinikilalang carrier ng grace mo. Because whether you like it or not, sa buong maghapon na iyong pakikisalamuha, pamumuhay sa mundong ito, makakaranas at makakaranas ka ng temptation at ng kung ano man. At minsan ho, tayo talaga ay uh, na, na, nagpo-fall dito. But because the grace is being supplied to you by your spiritual father, ang sabi ni Pablo sa Ephesians 3.2, for you have heard the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. The grace that you need to overcome, the grace that you need
to be empowered, the grace that you need to uh, to be delivered or to overcome temptation is already given by God in the life of your pastor as your spiritual father. That is why if you behave and connect to him in the spirit as a spiritual son, ano mangyayari? He can easily release the grace of God to you and as he released God's grace to you, he has now the authority or he has now the free hand to form Christ in you. Until one day, lagi niyang tandaan, ang nagpatalot, nagpataob kay Satanas pagdating sa temptation na hindi niya talaga natukso, walang iba kundi ang Panginoong Iso Kristo. At itong trabaho ng spiritual father mo, ipoform niya si Christ sa buhay mo para pagdating ng mga tukso ni Satanas katulad ni Kristo, hindi ka rin maisahan. At ang sabi sa Matthew 4.11, And the devil left him. Anong ibig sabihin? Isang buhay, a devil-free life, ito ang kayang isupply at ibigay ng iyong spiritual father. Number four, the role of the pastor or spiritual father in the lives of his sons is to reform the church for growth and revival. Sabi ko noong nakaraan, hindi maiwasan, nadideform talaga tayo. Maaring sa ngayon, okay, sa mga susunod na panahon, because hatang nandito tayo sa lupa, hindi titigil ang demonyo para ikaw talaga ay, uh, you know, isahan. Pero, ganito natin pinipresent ang kahalagahan sa pagkakaroon ng isang spiritual father. Because your spiritual father, one of his major function is to protect you against the works of the enemy. To cover you against the attacks of the enemy and he will be the one to fight the devil just to protect you. Kaya nga, pag nare-reform, ay pag nare-deform, kaya ng The, 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 your spiritual father had given the grace to reform you and to bring growth to lead you to your maturity and revival or refreshment. Yan ang kayang ibigay ng spiritual father. Kaya nga, if you are under the authority of a spiritual father, your pastor, okay, napakahalaga ho nito na kaya niya pong mag-create uh, mag, uh, ng reform brings you to your maturity and most especially give refreshment. Ibig sabihin, revival. Magkaroon ka ng panibagong sigla, panibagong uhaw at gutom sa salita ng Diyos. Your pastor can take you to the next dimension, to a higher dimension in the spirit. Ganun kahalaga ang father and son relationship. Now, uh, The characteristics of a spiritual father. So, mahalaga ito pag-usapan natin ngayong gabi, no? Characteristics of a spiritual father or a the spiritual father and the carrier of your grace. Your spiritual father is also your the carrier of God's grace for you. To give you a clear example, a clear definition, what is God's grace? Sabi before, God's grace or the grace of God is uh, unmerited favor. Tama naman po yun. Pero to be more specific, God's grace is God's power and ability working in you for you to become what God wants you to be. Mayroong kang destiny, marating mo lang ang destiny na yan kung ma-access mo yung grasya ng Diyos. Another meaning of God's grace, it is God's power and ability working through you for you to do what God wants you to do. Doing the works of God cannot be fulfilled through man's ways. God's work should be fulfilled through man's or through God's ways and through the Spirit of God. And that is what the grace of God can do to you. Sabi ni Pablo, I am what I am by the grace of God. So ano ibig sabihin? Paul was not included in the original 12 apostles. Pero kung titingnan ninyo ang nagawa ni Pablo, na surpass niya yung labing dalawang apostol, na kasama ni Kristo. It is not because Paul was a good and a brilliant guy. It was because the grace of God that was deposited in his life that enabled him to wrote the 13 episodes or one three fourth ng uh, New Testament. Okay, one third ng New Testament. Nakita natin. E talagang si Pablo ho ang uh, sumulat. 13 epistles in the New Testament. 27 books lang sa New Testament. So, ano ibig sabihin? It was the grace of God. So, dito mo, the grace of God, okay, is very important. At ang tanong nyo ngayon siguro, Pastor, saan ma-access yung God's grace na yan? 
Yan sabi ng Bible kasi Jesus was full of grace and He is the source of grace. He is already in heaven. But before the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, He gave gifts to the church. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. So yung gift na yun, inilagay niya sa buhay ng mga tao sa fivefold ministry na kanya namang nirigalo sa simbahan. That is why clear as crystal, crystal, your pastor is God's gift to you. Regalo ng Diyos ang mga pastor natin sa atin. Sa mga pastor naman, ang ating spiritual mentor, spiritual father ay regalo din ng Diyos sa atin. Ingatan natin, hindi lamang dahil sa kanila, kundi dahil sa Diyos na nagbigay sa kanila sa atin. This is the truth that most believers doesn't know. Kaya ang nangyayari dahil hindi nila ito alam, they treat their pastor with contempt. Ano ibig sabihin? No respect at all. They na, they're, never, they're, they're not mindful of their pastor, the needs of their pastor, o ano nang... Minsan nga, eh, nung pandemic, maraming pastor umiyak. Alam niyo bakit? Kasi never silang naalala ng kanilang mga miyembro. Pinabayaan talaga sila. Alam niyo kung kayo po yung isa sa mga miyembro na nakikinig sa ngayon during pandemic, two years, hindi niyo malang naalala ang pastor niyo, na hindi niyo malang nakumusta, mag kayo. Alam niyo bakit? You are insulting God. Because during that pandemic, kaya marami rin during pandemic ng mga mananampalataya, lalo naghirap eh. Bakit? Kasi wala silang, hindi silang mindful. Hindi malang sumagi sa isipan nila yung regalo ng Diyos sa kanila. Ang tao na nangangaral, nagpalakas ng kanilang pananampalataya, never man lang nilang naalala, never nilang kinumusta, never siya naportahan. And you are not giving God a reason to bless you because you are not mindful of His gift of the person, the pastor that He had given you. So wala rin talaga, kaya gapang din yung iba eh. Naintindihan? Bigyan natin ang Diyos palagi ng rason para tayo pagtalain. And the only the major reason why God wants to bless us. Why? Because we take care of His servant. Nagkakandidan tayo. We take care of His of His uh, ambassador. Nakita niyo? Pag inaalagaan natin ang lingkod ng Diyos, Matthew 10, 30, Matthew 10, ano? Uh, makikita natin yan, 41 to 42. Makikita natin. Ah, sino man nagbigay ng isang basong tubig, malamig na tubig? Sa isang propeta, itatanggap ng reward ng propeta. Ang isang nagbigay ng isang malamig na tubig sa isang uh, uh, lingkod ng Diyos ay hindi mawala ng reward o ng gantimpala. Ito ho ang pangako ng Diyos. That is why marami ho. Alam nyo, ngayong gabing ito, kung buksan nyo lang ang inyong mga puso at kaisipan higit sa lahat espiritu, maintindihan nyo eh. Marami ho during pandemic, there are pastors crying. Pastors are quitting from their ministry. Why? Because people do no longer remember them. Hindi mindful, hindi malang kinukumusta, hindi malang tinutulungan. Alam naman nila na sila yung magiging instrumento ng Diyos para tulungan. Alam nyo kung kasama kayo doon, ha? Yung lumipas sa dalawang taong pandemya, hindi nyo malang maalala ang pastor nyo, hindi nyo malang makumusta, hindi nyo malang natulungan, Magrepent kayo because it will be charged by God against you. I am not kidding. Because as part of the church, you are part of the of the help na kailangan para masustain yung lingkod ng Diyos. Kasi pag nasustain ang lingkod ng Diyos, masusustain din ang gawain ng Diyos. But how, what have you done? Ngayon magtatanong kayo, eh, bakit hirap pa rin kami? Dapat lang. Why? Because... Ah, yung dapat mong gawin, hindi mo ginagampanan. And sad to say, others, they're just living for their own. As in, totally they abandon. Okay? The, 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 the servant of God. My friends, never do it. Never do that. Because your pastor is God's gift to you. Regalo ng Diyos ang pastor sa iyo. Kung hayaan nyo lang ang inyong pastor na magministeryo sa buhay ninyo, Kilalanin siya bilang ambassador ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Your spiritual father. You will see the difference. I challenge you. This is a challenge for you. Do it now. Behave like a good and accurate son to your spiritual father. Pastors, behave like a good and accurate son to your spiritual mentor or spiritual father. You will see the difference. That's my challenge. If you are brave enough, you are man enough, then accept the challenge. Do it Submit 
obey and continue to follow all the way, not halfway, not along the way, but all the way, and see the difference. Malinaw? So what are the characteristics of a spiritual father and the carrier of our grace? Number one, he is a person who will break your heart. Now that you enter into a covenant relationship with your pastor as your spiritual father and you become or became his spiritual son, his work is to break your heart. Bakit kailangan basagin ang puso? Because isa ho sa mabigat na hamon sa relationship, sa father and son relationship, is the son should learn how to set aside his interest, personal interest. How to set aside, set aside his desires and begin to embrace the desires of his father. Yan ho ang pinaka-challenge na kung saan ayaw gawin ng marami. Sa mga nakapasok na ho at nag-decide na to, to enter into a father and son relationship, expect your spiritual father is a person who will break your heart. Because his desire will become your desire. At madalas pa yung desire niyang susundin mo. Madalas natatamaan yung desire mo. At ito ang challenge. At dito mo papatunayan that you are an accurate son to your spiritual father. Ano ang kanya gagamitin to break your heart? 2 Timothy 3.16-17 all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. If your spiritual father is breaking your heart, you are suffering in your following, then that is a worth obedience. Bakit? Madaling sumunod pag ang mga bagay o ang sitwasyon ay komportable sa iyo. Pero what if yung demand or command ng yung spiritual father is conflict sa gusto mo? That's the, ang tawag ko dyan, proving time. At dito, hindi sanay at hindi alam ng marami ang ganito. That is why the grace of God and the blessings of God cannot flow like a mighty river in a church or in the lives of many believers because iniiwasan nila yung ganitong commitment. The breaking of your heart. Hindi, kumbagay, hindi ka makakasabay or ito ay kumbaga maapektuhan yung mga personal mong interest, mga personal mong desires. But for the sake of the covenant that you have with your spiritual father, you are willing and give him the free hand to break your heart. At dito ang gagamitin niya ay walang iba kundi ang salita ng Diyos. He will, there will be teaching, rebuking, correcting and training Ano ang purpose? Bakit kailangan, kailangan ma-break ang heart natin? Kailangan matuto tayong mag-submit sa authority? Matuto tayong mag-submit yung will natin sa kanyang will? At i-embrace yung kanyang uh, mandate? I-embrace yung kanyang teaching? I-embrace yung kanyang uh, command? Bakit? Because it is a training so that the soul that of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Para ho, mas maliwanag ninyong maunawaan. Marami ho ang gustong pumasok sa pagsusundalo. Habang kinakausap mo yung papasok pa lang sa pagsusundalo, pag tinanong mo, anong gusto mong maging? Gusto ko po maging sundalo. Tanungin mo, bakit gustong gusto mong maging sundalo? Kasi gusto ko maglingkod sa bayan. Okay, magandang mga sagot yan eh. At na talagang ano mo ba yan? Desire? Opo, desire ko talaga maging sundalo. Habang kausap mo siya at wala pa siya sa training, ang mga sagot niya talagang puro encouraging. Tama? Pero pag naroon na siya sa actual training, 
magkakaroon na ng breaking of heart at minsan breaking of bones. Malinaw. Pag wala pa sa training, magandang sinasabi. Pag wala pa doon sa actual training, talagang grabe yung inspiration. Pero pag naroon na sa actual training at nagsimula ng makaranas ng discomfort, nagsimula ng masaktan ng katawan, nagsimula ng dumating ang hirap, doon mapapatunayan kung ang taong kausap mo ay talagang disidido, sincero, na magiging sundalo. Kaya mo, madami ang nagsasabi, nagtataas ng kamay, kung gusto mong sumunod sa Panginoon, lift up your hands, and then pray to God, tell God, madali yun eh. Sabihin mo sa Panginoon, Lord, simula ngayon, naglilingkod na ako. Madali. Pero always be mindful of this. Remember this. Whatever you declare before God will be tested. Pag sinasabi mo, simula ngayon, ikaw na ang Diyos at hari ng buhay ko. Make sure. Be aware and make sure that willing kang i-give up ang lahat ng meron ka for the sake na ma-establish ang pag-ahari ng Diyos sa buhay mo. And that is breaking of heart at yun ang trabaho ng spiritual father mo. Nagkakaintindihan tayo. Gagamitin niya ang salita ng Diyos. You will be rebuked, you will be hurt, you will be offended. But the purpose of that breaking of your heart is to equip you for what? To do good works. To do the works of God. To advance the kingdom. Nagkakanawan tayo. Kaya matuto ka rito na isa sa tabihin sa dili mo. The Lord Jesus Christ, again, is a concrete, powerful example. When He was about to be nailed on the cross, He was about to be punished and begin to suffer. At the Garden of Gethsemane, He asked the Father, If it is possible, let this cup of suffering okay, pass from me. But not my will, but let your will be done. Nakita niyo? This is a very clear example. Ang sabi niya, ako ay naginagpis, ang puso ko naginagpis na parang halos ay kamatay ko. It was a breaking of his heart. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is sinless. The Lord Jesus Christ is living in holiness and righteousness. But still, He will taste death. This time, He will be with the criminals. He will be identified as a wicked man because of the sins of the world. And His heart was broken. But still, because of His submission to the Father, because of His submission and uh, uh, respect and reverence to the Father, He mentioned, not my will, but let your will be done. Mga kapatid, the characteristics, one of the characteristics of a spiritual father is to break. He is a person who will break your heart. He will bring you out from your comfort zone. The flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ is telling him, it is, it is unfair. Totoo naman eh, unfair talaga kasi he is holy and he will become a sinner. He is eternal and he will going to taste death. Para kanino, sa mga walang kwentang mga tao rin na puro kasalanan lang ginagawa. So his, his body, his flesh is crying out for justice. But the will of the Father is for him to become a savior of the world. I get you na. Yan yung breaking of heart. Na kahit na tama ka, na kahit na gusto mong gawin, pero dahil ang gusto ng iyong spiritual father, ang gusto ng, ng iyong leader ay ganito ang gagawin natin for the glory of God, then you are willing to set aside not my, not my will but let your will be done. The breaking of heart ay napapatunayan sa oras na naroon ka na sa labas ng comfort zone mo. But if you follow your spiritual father at your comfort zone, you follow your spiritual father sa isang komportabling pamamaraan, expect the breaking of heart will come to you. Nagkaintindihan tayo?
Hebrews 4.12, anong gagamitin niya? The Word. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. To break your heart and to bring you out from your comfort zone, expect your spiritual father to deliver sharp and offending messages. Why? Because it will judge the thoughts It judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. Kaya nga yung mabreak ka, masaktan ka, it is part of the process. In a father and son relationship, expect this thing. At hindi yung madali. I've, I've experienced it. Mahirap pong magsalita at mahirap mag-share sa ganitong pangangaral kung hindi mo nararanasan. There are times that you need to do something But because your spiritual father wants you to do or to do other thing or to, to go with him, to accompany him, you need to set aside, set aside what you're about to do. At minsan kailangan mong magsakripisyo. Ang pagsunod ho at pagbehave bilang accurate and a good son to your spiritual father, it is full of sacrifices. If you are not willing to go through sacrifices in following and obeying your spiritual father, impartation will be made impossible. Because impartation only takes place in the context of accurate relationship. Kaya nga mahalaga maintindihan natin to. One of the characteristics of a spiritual father or the carrier of your grace is he is a person who will break your heart. He will bring you out from your comfort zone. Why? Because Christianity is not a playground. Actually, in playground, it is not a place of comfort. Christianity is a battleground. It is a place of discomfort. It is a place of war. That is why the work of your spiritual father, his role and characteristics, is to break your heart so that you will not dwell in your comfort zone. Rather, You will be one with your spiritual father, advancing the kingdom, reaching your God-given destiny, helping him to finish his assignment. Nagkakaunawa na tayo. In my brief analysis, maraming mga mananampalataya, mediocre. At sinasabing mediocre, average lang. Hindi excellent, hindi rin dull. Average. Alam niyo bakit? Mas nakakatakot yung average. Kung ikaw ay mainit, sabi ng Panginoon, maging mainit ka na. Kung malamig ka, maging malamig ka. Ayaw ng Diyos na malahini nga. Lukewarm. Isusuka ka niya, sabi niya. Bakit? Kasi lukewarm believers, mediocre, average believers, cannot decide if they really want to follow or they just follow their pastor at a distance. Ano ibig sabihin? Pag magandang sitwasyon, sama ako. Pag hindi magandang sitwasyon, atras ako. Hindi po pwede yan. We are now taking this study to the next level. You must be ready to be broken. The Lord Jesus Christ, though He was God, He did not use it for His advantage, but rather He took the place of a servant and became obedient to God. Until when? Until death. Death on the cross. Hindi lamang simpleng kamatayan ng ang naranasan ni Kristo, kundi kamatayan ng isang kriminal, isang masamang tao sa cross. Because people on those times, pag nagtako ka sa cross, ikaw nang pinakamasamat, sinusuka ka na ng susyudad. At yun ang klaseng kamatayan na kanyang naranasan. It is really against His will that He allowed Himself to be broken. His heart was broken just to show us an example. How should the way we should obey and follow our spiritual father? Alinaw? Maaring iba sa inyo, nagulat kayo, ganun pala yun. At nung iba sa inyo, hindi nyo pa nga ito nagawa. Ni minsan. But praise God tonight. 
the Lord had opened the scripture for you in order for you to behave as a good and accurate son because the moment you behave as a good and accurate son to your spiritual father, then your inheritance will be released anytime. Amen? He is a person who will build your spiritual stature. It is very important to maintain the anatin to. Another characteristic of a spiritual father or the carrier of your grace is this. He is a person who will build your spiritual stature. You cannot grow your stature alone. Kaya nga ho, wag kayong ma-offend, wag kayong masaktan. Yung mga hindi nagko-connect sa kanilang pastor, hindi nakikinig sa mensahe ng kanilang pastor, naging tinawag nila sa kanilang kristyano, pero hindi nakikinig sa mensahe, hindi nagko-connect sa mensahe, walang pakialam sa church, walang pakialam sa mga kapatiran, magtanong-tanong ka sa sarili mo kung kristyan ka talaga. Alam mo bakit? Because kung ikaw ay mananatiling ganyang klaseng kristyano, ang tawag sa iyo ay bansot, hindi lumalago, nananatiling Christian lang sa title, pero alipin ang, ang kalidad ng pamumuhay. You need to understand this. Another characteristic of a spiritual father is he is a person who will build your spiritual stature. Pag sinasabing spiritual stature, you're standing before God. And a man of stature is a man respected in heaven. Whatever he says, the, whatever he says, the heavens back it up. Pag may dinikir siya, ginagawa at nirume respond yung langit. Why? Because he's a man of stature. Abraham was a man of stature before God. Bring judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. He informed Abraham. And Sabin and Jesus, shall I hide from my friend Abraham? The Lord will reveal His plans and purposes to a man of stature. Elijah is another example of a man of stature. And Sabin and Elijah, there will be no rain for three and a half years except at my word. The impossible or impossibilities becomes possible if you are a man of stature. Then how can you become a man of stature? Somebody must build your stature in the spirit. And that is the work of a spiritual father. Ako ho, masipag rin ho ako at matyaga mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Kumbaga talagang ginagawa ko rin naman ho. Alam ko kay ibang mga paso nakikinig sa akin, ganun din po kayo. Pero when I started connecting myself to a spiritual mentor, okay, na kinukonekan ko ngayon, that was 2012, 10 years ago. I see the difference. Because before, kahit gaano ka kasipag, kahit gaano ka katsaga, nire-reward ka ng Diyos. Kasi nga, what you saw is what you reap. Yung pagtsatsaga mo, pagsisipag mo, mayroong reward si Lord. Pero pag ikaw ngayon ay nag-connect sa isang spiritual mentor mo, serves as your spiritual father, yung supply ng word overflow. Ang problem ko before, paano pahabain yung minsahe? Kasi, maiksi lang ang minsahe, Lagi, na, ang ano mo problema pa, paano pahabain? So, naglalagay ka ng mga illustrations, mga kwento para humaba. But this time, ang problema ko ngayon, pa, paano tumigil? Because of the overflow of the blessings, overflow of revelations, your problem now is pa, paano paiksiin, pa, paano patigilin. Kaya nga series, you know the series na pinag natin? For your information, pandemic pa to. Two years na almost. Ay, higit na two years. Hindi pa rin tayo tapos. Bakit? Because the overflow of the revelations ay, na, ay nangyari through impartation because when the time I connected myself to the person who serves as a carrier of my grace, the one 
who imparted to me the revelations from God. This time, nabibuild yung stature. Alam niyo ho, ang pinakamaganda sa pagiging mananampalataya, watch me now, ang pinakamaganda sa isang mananampalataya ay personal mong monitor na ikaw nga ay lumalago sa iyong pananampalataya. It is a great encouragement to see yourself growing and maturing in your faith. And you see yourself also growing and establishing your spiritual stature. Mapupuna mo yan eh. Ikaw mismo na monitor mo, lumalago ka. Ikaw mismo na monitor mo, nagmamature ka. And that is the byproduct of becoming a spiritual son to your spiritual father. In 2 Peter 3.17-18, it says, New, in New International Version, Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Sinabi rito ni Pedro, Be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. One of the major work of a spiritual father is to build your spiritual stature. Why? Because the last spirit that the devil will unleash in the last days is the spirit of deception. That is why Peter warned okay, the, the believers, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. So, pag ganito ho ang warning, ibig sabihin, mayroong mga secure ang position, but because they do not enter or they do not, you know, uh, receive the accurate revelation of the ideal relationship that should operate in the house, ako mga kapatid, itong sinasabi ni Pedro, mayroon talaga mga nakaposisyon, tama ang buhay, tama ang, tama ang ginagawa, but because they are not operating in the ideal relationship which is father and son relationship, pwede! Sabi sa Matthew 24 that even the very elect will be deceived. Ano ang gagawin natin para huwag tayong mag-fall sa trap ng deception ng kaaway? Grow! But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep on knowing Christ Keep on uh, uh, living like Him, Christ-likeness. He will do that for you. He will build your spiritual stature to be like Him. Kung maalala sa previous studies natin, one of the role of a spiritual father is to form Christ in you. Once na na-form si Christ sa buhay mo, you are being established in the doctrines and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you live like Him, what happened? The devil will leave you. You will live a devil-free life. Nakita niyo? Another role ng spiritual father is a person who will build your spiritual stature. Mag-grow ka na mag-grow as you connect. At ikaw mismo na monitor mo yung growth mo, na monitor mo yung maturity mo, na monitor mo that you're growing in your stature. You're standing before God is getting, you know, getting uh, yung, yung stability mo. Namumonitor mo, mga kapatid. This is very important. Allow your pastor. Allow yourself to become a spiritual son and allow him to become your spiritual father. Connect to him in the spirit. Be the embodiment of every teaching na kanyang nire-release. Be the proof of the principle that being preached. And be obedient and model in the, inside the house of God. Para yung iba mayroong gagayahin. That is why we need sons. Kung mayroon mang crisis sa loob ng church, these are sons and daughters in the spirit. Ito yung crisis sa loob ng church. Hindi pera. Because the moment father and son relationship is established inside the church, provision is not a problem. Malinaw ho? 
He will build your stature. Kailangan mo ang tulong ng spiritual father mo, ng pastor mo, para ma-build yung spiritual stature mo, para mag-mature ka, para mag-grow ka. And others, tumanda na lang, taon, dekada nang lumilipas, hindi connected sa pastor, bagkos kontra bida pa. Ano nangyayari? Walang growth, walang maturity, full of immaturity. Immature people, they are vessels of the devil that will hinder the growth and the maturity and they will hinder the destiny of the church. Kaya dangerous ang magiging immature. Judas was an immature believer. Demas was an immature believer. Itong mga taong ito, mga immature, they are not connected to their, to their leader. Ano nangyayari? They became tool or tools of the devil. Kora, Abiram, Gatan. These are immature leaders. Leaders to her. Immature, they are not connected with Moses. Rather, they want to build their own empire. Then the Lord opened the ground and eat them up alive. Nakita niyo? Allow your pastor to help you. Hindi ka pwedeng mabuhay sa mundo, kapatid, at makikipagsagupaan sa mga pagsubok at hamon ng buhay na hindi establishado yung spiritual stature mo. The devil left the Lord Jesus Christ because he has an increasing established powerful stature before God. And if you want to be like him, somebody must form Christ in you and that is your spiritual father. Number three, he is a person who will lead you to be bold in implement to implement principles without compromise. Number three, the characteristics of a spiritual father, he is a person who will lead you to be bold to implement principles without compromise. Isa to sa tuturo ng iyong spiritual father? To live according to God's principles. Walang compromise. And you will become bold in doing it. Even if others will not, you will still follow. Why? Ito yung commitment mo. At kung nobody will teach you this, ano mangyayari? You violate principles. Lagi niyong tandaan, principles are permanent. Principles are given by God to us in order for us to make life easy. The principle of sowing and reaping. Pag may tinanim, mayroong anihin. Pag walang tinanim, walang anihin. Principle yan. Malinaw? Mahirap yung walang tinanim, tapos at pagdating ng anihan, mayroon kang inani. Delikado yan. Ano pa? Maraming prinsipyo sa Bible. Give and it shall be given to you. Pag may binigay ka, mayroon din, mag mayroon din magbibigay sa iyo. Pag may tinanim, may ani. Maraming prinsipyo sa Bible. Na kung saan, kung walang mag magtuturo sa iyo, nalaparan ito, walang magpapahayag sa iyo nito, anong mangyayari? You will become lawless. You always violate principles. Sabi ng Bible, submit to your leaders. If you are not a leader, then you need to submit. Submit to authorities. Ito, matinding hamon tong principles to after ng election natin. Kailangan marunong ka mag-submit sa principles. Yung nanalo, di mo binoto, pero siya nang diniklara, pinoproklama na magiging presidente, magiging senador, magiging congressman. Aba, you need to follow principles. Ang prinsipyo ng Diyos, Romans 13, Ang sino mang nakaupo na lingkod bayan, sino mang nakaupo na leaders of the land, they are also servants of God. Servants of God are not only pastors. Servants of God are the people leading the nation. At sasabihin mo, wicked sila. Tingnan niyo ako mabuti. Pinakita ng Panginoong Heso Kristo 
At nasaksihan ni Pedro kung paano si Kristo magtrato ng mga authority. Before the, the Israel was under the dominion or rulership of the Roman Empire. Pagdating nila doon sa Roma, ano sabi ni Pedro? Lord, magbubuwis ba tayo? O nakita niyo na? Kasi gusto ni Pedro, kasi ang tingin ni Pedro kay Kristo, hari, at din sinasabi niya, indirectly, hari ka, magbubuwis ba tayo? Ang gusto ni Pedro, revolusyon na, para ikaw na magiging hari, tapos chief of staff mo ako. O nakita mo? Magbubuwis ba tayo? Anong sagot ni Kristo? Mamingwit ka. Gamitin mo yung talent mo. Fisherman ka, di ba? Mamingwit ka. At yung unang isda na mahuli mo, buksan mo ang bibig. Mayroon tera, ibayad mo bilang buwis nating dalawa. Nakita nyo? Is Roman Empire corrupt? Yes! Roman Empire, not a good leader? Yes! Bad authority. But because the Lord Jesus Christ followed principles, He still submit. Kaya nga, nasabi niya, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. Anong ibig sabihin? Learn to follow and submit yourself to authority. Kaya yung mga mananampalataya, ha, makanig kayo mabuti. Maraming iba sa inyo, dismayado, sananalo. Stop that. Magbasa kayo ng Romans 13 verse 1 to 5. Kasi pagka hindi ninyo yung basahin at hindi kayo magiging principled believers, you will be a rebel, delikado ka. Because ang sabi ng Bible, those who go against authority, they are going against God. Same thing in the context of the church. If you will go against your pastor, you're going against God. Nilinaw na ng Diyos, if you go against the authorities, governing authorities sa gobyerno natin, then you are going against God. You better submit now. At sabihan nyo yung iba na mga hindi pa rin makamove on, na hindi pa rin makatanggap ngayon, mag-submit na. At ipamulat mo at ibasa at print nyo na malaki yung Romans 13 verse 1 to 5 para may saayos din ang kanilang buhay before the judgment of God will fall down on them. See, bakit ganun siya kabold mag-preach ng principle? Why? Because somebody is also leading me to be bold in implementing principles without compromise. If you ask me, yung bang, yung bang nanalo ang binoto mo? Hindi. Gusto ko yung binoto ko, yun ang manalo. Pero hindi siya nanalo. But because somebody is leading me to implement boldly the principle, I will submit. Kahit hindi yun ang binoto ko, magsasubmit ako. Hindi para sa, hindi lamang dahil kailangan ko magsubmit, kundi ito ang sabi ng hari ng mga hari Panginoon ng mga Panginoon. Ang Panginoon Yeso Kristo. So Luke 9.23, it says, Then he said to them, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Isang prinsipyo na pinakita ng Panginoon kasi marami ang gustong sum sumunod sa Kanya eh. Alam niyo ang purpose nila? They want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ because they thought that He is the King that will deliver them from the government or from the oppression of the Roman Empire. Wrong! Pangalawa, they followed Him because He always make or make miracles. Nakikita nila, gusto gusto nila makita ng mga healings Mga signs, wonders, and miracles. Wrong. Others followed him because they get something from him. Wrong. Kaya ang Panginoon, pinakita sa kanila yung prinsipyo. If you want to follow me, first deny yourself. Because ang pagsunod sa Diyos ay hindi madali. Hindi siya easy road. But it is a rocky road. Alina na na kung hindi mo i-deny ang sarili mo, hindi ka tatagal sa pagsunod kay Kristo. At pinatunayan ito ng mga disipulo ni Kristo. They left everything and follow Jesus. So if nobody will lead you to be bold to implement principles without compromise, mabilis kang ma-influensya ng iba. Eh ba't kasunod ng sunod dyan? Isa amin niya, simple lang kami rito. Yan ang problema eh. Kasi pag nakarinig ka na ng sinasabi ng iba, 
at hindi ka spiritual son to your spiritual father, mabilis ka masway. Pero if you are a spiritual son to your spiritual father, even if others will give you options, you will not take it. Why? Because you are a son to your spiritual father and walang iwanan, walang labyagan. Yung mga iba na mabilis makinig o ma ma mabilis makinig sa sinasabi ng iba and they will make decision to cut off relationship, they will make decision na wag nang sumunod. Yan ay isang patunay na yung sonship mo hilaw. Kasi ang totoo at purong sonship is walang iwanan, walang laglag. Even if you don't feel comfortable, even if you are hurting, even na ikaw ay nakakarinig at nakakita na ng maraming options para magkaroon ka ng liway, para magkaroon ka ng, uh, para makaiwas ka sa pagsunod, sa mabigat na prinsipyo na nagdudulot sa iyo ng discomfort. Still, you become a man of principle. You follow what the Word of God says. And you follow what your father, spiritual father, is telling you. That's the time the Lord will promote you and take you to the next level, mga kapatid. This is what is lacking in the house of God. Matthew 4.19 And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Talikan ko lang yung Luke 9.23 Whoever wants to be my disciple must. With the word must is non-optional, non-negotiable, and it is imperative. Pag sabi imperative, must be done. Must deny himself. Principle yan, mga kapatid. If you enter into a father and son relationship, self-denial is the key. At ang sabi niya, and take up their cross daily. The moment you deny yourself, you set aside your, your interest, you set aside your desires, and allow the desires and interests of your spiritual father na yun ang iyong gagawin, kailangan you take up your cross daily. Cross, ilang ulit ko na sinasabi, means death. Everybody na napako sa cross ng Calvary o sa cross ay namamatay, ibababa silang patay. Same thing. We need to take up our cross daily. We need to die to self daily. It is a principle. Para tayo ay makasunod at magiging bold to implement principles without compromise. Fighting. It is a principle of, the, of heaven. It is not a principle of your pastor. It is a principle from heaven. It was God who challenged people. Test me in this. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house because I have servants, I have, I have a work, I, I will advance the kingdom of God on earth. Yan ang, yan ang punto ng Panginoon. Kaya dalhin niyo lahat, buong buo, ang mga ikapo at handog sa storehouse. Para ano? Para yung naroon ay magpapatuloy sa pag-advance ng kingdom. It was it is a principle. At ang sabi niya, test me in this. Bakit sinasabi niya, test me in this? Because alam ng Diyos, ang pinakakaribal ng Diyos sa buhay ng tao, pera, resources, possessions. Ang sabi niya, subukan niya ako. Principle lang, subukan niya ako. Kung hindi ko buksan ang durungawan ng langit at ibusan yung masaganang pagpapala. Not in a form of money, but in a form of abilities, in a form of opportunities, in a form of potentials. Pag ginamit mo yung lahat ng binuo sa iyo ng Diyos, wala kang lugar na paglalagyan. Ibig sabihin, there, is, there will be an overflow of blessings in your life, in the life of your family, and even in the life of your generations. And I will devour, I will, I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops. Before tanim me, eh, ngayon trabaho, sasawayin ng Diyos ang mga gawa ng demonyo laban sa'yo sa trabaho mo. You will be promoted, you will be kept, you will be protected, and verse 12, the nations will call you blessed. The blessing of the Lord will manifest a principle yan. That is why it is very important na makita natin to. We need a spiritual father, a person who will lead you to be bold in implementing principles without compromise. 
dying to self. Okay? Take up your cross daily and then follow me. Following Christ is denying our selves, interest, and desires. Dying to self. Ibig sabihin, gusto man ng laman mo. Pero hindi yun ang pinapagawa sa'yo ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng spiritual father mo. Anong gagawin mo? You will deny it. And it is very challenging. And then following Him. Palagi natin sinasabi, without following, there is no making. And without making, there is no becoming. Mga kapatid, ito ang challenge natin. Habang tumatagal, pinapaliwanag at paliwanag ng paliwanag ang ating pag-aaral. Kung ang iba sa inyo hindi pa nakarating sa first base, kailan ka magkisimula? Start now. So that you will, net, you will not remain slave. Pag sinasabing slave, immature, ignorant to what God is doing in the season. Start becoming a son. Behave an accurate and a good son to your spiritual father. Connect him in the spirit. Allow him to break your heart. Allow him to make you become bold in implementing principles without compromise. And in doing these things, you grow your stature. In doing these things, okay, your father can build your stature. And the moment your stature is being built in the spirit, get ready. Because the heavens will be open. And so much blessings like a mighty river will flow in your life. And you will become a channel of blessings to others. This is the word. This is the word of the Lord for all of us tonight. Honor, respect, support, and always love your pastor because he's God's gift to you and he is your spiritual father. Pastors, honor, respect, support, and always love your spiritual mentor or your spiritual father so that what you saw is what you reap. God bless us all. Your table will never run out of food. The works of your hands will be blessed. And all the principles that we've learned tonight will be will not just remain a word, but it will be manifested over our lives as we become the embodiment of this message to become models in churches and even the people of God wherever we go. God bless you all. This is my prayer. And this is what I decree in the Spirit, and it will surely come to pass. In Jesus' powerful name, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Shalom!